In this video, we're going to go over the download and installation of ASAV on VMware vCenter. To download software off of Cisco's site, navigate to the URL on the screen. After doing so, you can type in ASAV and it should take you to the types of software options. I'm going to go ahead and click on the ASA software link. This will bring us to the software download page. As you can see on top, we have several gold star releases that are notated. These are usually recommended based on stability and longevity. I'd usually recommend picking one of these unless there's a feature you need in a different release. Scrolling down, you can see various download options for this train of code for KVM, Hyper-V, and of course VMware. Prior to recording, I did already download the software, so let's go ahead and move over to our vCenter. In vCenter, I'm going to right-click on the folder and then select the option for Deploy OVF Template. Since I already extracted the zip that I downloaded previously, I'm going to select Local Files and then open that folder. Since this is being deployed in vCenter, I'll select the ASA VI files, the boot VMDK, Day0 disk image file, and the disk0 VMDK. Now let's click Next. On this screen, we can change the virtual machine name and place a VM in a different folder if we'd like. I'm going to go ahead and rename the virtual machine to ASA Example. If we had multiple servers in this vCenter deployment, this is where we would choose which server the VM would be spun up on. On the next screen, we're given a review of the details of the virtual machine that we're spinning up. There's not really much to do here except click Next. Of course, I'm going to go ahead and accept the license agreement. On the next page, we can choose the deployment configuration that we're going to use for the ASA V. Depending on the model you are licensed for, the ASAV can scale from 100 megs to 10 gigs. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 100 megs and click Next. On this page, we can choose what storage to save the virtual machine on. On this next page, we can set up which port group each VNIC on the ASAV will be assigned to. I'm going to make some changes so one interface is in my external facing port group and the other one is in my LAN port group. This is where we can customize the template and have some sort of pre-configuration after the ASAV is deployed. We have the option to deploy it in HA mode or standalone. Since this is the only ASAV that I'm deploying, I'll just go ahead and select standalone. For the host name, I'm going to go ahead and give it ASAV test. I'll go ahead and keep the firewall mode as routed. If you're going to be using a separate management interface, you can set up its IP address via DHCP by checking this box or statically configuring it below. If we wanted to, we can put a default route on the management interface here. Below that, we can configure the DNS server IP address if we wish to. I'm going to scroll back up to the top and start my configuration of the management IP address. So I'll go ahead and configure it as 10.1.100.55 slash 24. For the default route, I'll just go ahead and put 10.1.100.254, which is the same subnet as the management IP address. I'm going to put the DNS server as 10.10.10.40. For the ID token, this is for licensing. Let me go ahead and pull up a browser to show you. We're going to have to pull up the Smart Licensing Portal. You can easily just Google Cisco Smart Licensing and it should come right up on the first link. From here, you can just click on Smart Software Licensing and it'll take you right there. Then let's go to the Inventory tab. We're going to go ahead and generate a token to use with this ASA. I'm going to set it as a one-time use token and once it's generated, I'll just copy it. Back in vCenter, I'll copy my token in. Scrolling down, I can enable HTTP access to the ASA management interface and specify which IP address or subnet should be able to access it. Below that, I can configure the same thing for SSH access. If we leave the fields at 0.0.0.0, that means that any IP address can SSH to this ASA. I'll go ahead and change that to my LAN subnet. Below that, we can configure the admin username and password for this ASA. 
Since I'm not going to be configuring any HA settings, I'll click Next to get to the end of this wizard. And then finally I'll click Finish to finalize this configuration and deploy the VM. As we can see, it's now deployed, so I'm going to go ahead and click the Power button to power up this VM. If we want, we can go ahead and console in to see the actual ASA startup for the first time. And with that, that comes to the end of our video for configuring ASA on vCenter.